What's good, y'all? Today I'm showing you my electric bike process so far. So uh, this is me building it. It's a 70, 72 volt, 3000 watt e-bike. Right here you can see I'm cutting off part of the controller to fit in the bike. Um, this was it at first right here. This is what we got started so far. We just set up the frame and put on the fork. It's plug and play, just screwed in. And we couldn't fit the controller in first because this battery. So that's why we cut down the sides and now we can fit it in there. So that's one way you can use a hacksaw just to cut down the sides. But we put some mirrors on it. Here's our, our LCD screen. We just connect that to the controller like to one of these pins. This is for the brakes. So when you pull that brake, it cuts off the motor. And we have some other cables here for our throttle. And all these cables connect to this 8-pin black connector that connects to the controller to make it easier. We also have some other plugs such as the alarm. And we got a USB for Bluetooth connection. Here's our on button. And here's our old motor here. And we'll be replacing it because part of the wire got messed up. And also, something jammed in the motor. I believe the magnet fell loose and the wheel wasn't able to move anymore. But here's just to show you that you're gonna need a spacer for your brakes. And you'll also need this spacer to protect the wire from the motor when it spins against the frame. We also got this rear shock on here. Here's a close up look at the forks. The links of the products will be in the description. And we also have a front spacer on this front brake. The brakes came with the kit here and we're just letting the air out of the tire here. We just wanna poke a hole, not poke a hole, poke inside of that valve. And right here, we just twisting off the spoke nuts because we're replacing the motor right here. So it's a simple process. You got these screws and then you got the spokes. You just want to loosen them up and pull them out. I recommend you try to level it out on a flat surface because these spokes will bend easily and you don't want to put stress on them. And you also want to remember the pattern because you're going to want to know how to put them back right. But if you look at the holes on the rim, they'll give you a good idea of which one is supposed to go in it. You could screw the last ones off by hand. It don't matter. Or you can use an Allen wrench to screw inside of the bolt to loosen it. Uh, later, I'll show you the inside of the hub motor to show what went wrong. But we're just finishing up pulling these last screws out. These last remaining ones, you could just pull them out by hand and there you go. Here's our old motor, here's our new motor here close up at the parts it's important you get these spacers because you don't want to rip up your wire like I did when you're buying one of these motors make sure to ask for one of them and make sure they come with one of them otherwise you're gonna wait a long time for it like I did I'm using custom brakes 203 millimeter this breaks and required a lot of adapters to put that on. But here, like with these spacers, you just wanna shove them, the wires through them to get them on there. Kinda complicated, but. There you go. And when you're taking this tire off, you gotta be careful, cause I pinched the tube. And you want to use some tire levers. I 
that's what I did. You may as well go to a shop because it's kind of difficult without the machine. But I'm going to show you guys the inside of the hub motor. We got a gear puller here. And we got a wrench. We're just loosening this up right here. Yeah, there's the inside of our hub motor. That thing is pretty much ruined. You could fix the magnets, but it's too difficult just to pull that thing off, in my opinion. Especially that the wires already got a lot of damage on it. That's why I went with a new one. And it's basically the same process. Just slide it back in to put these new spokes on the rim. Once again, you want to be careful. When you're pulling the rim, it is going to take a little bit of force to put these in the right spot because of the tension. But you don't want to bend the spokes. And when you're screwing them back in, just screw everyone loosely. Go around, screw them in loose. And then tighten 25%, 50%, and then tighten all the way once you go around. This is what it looks like so far. Some of them you just gotta force in there because that's the way it is. But here's our old battery connector. That thing turned black. It's the XT60 connector. Every time you plug one of those in, they spark up on you. And it's not even worth having them. Uh, solution, you can get XT90 anti-sparks. Or you can get a circuit breaker with a switch. So that thing don't spark on you every time you plug it in. Eventually, that things burn out and they lose the contact and then they don't work no more. And here's a little spoke wrench we're using to tighten them. Pretty simple, you just screw it in there. Just go all the way around. You can click on the spokes and hear which one is loose, it'll make different sounds. Or you can give them a little bend. Yeah, here's our kickstand right here. We bought one of these motorcycle universal kickstands and got a steel plate because we had some one kickstand and you know that uh, it was cheap and that thing just broke off. So we're making a custom one, 3 8 inch of steel will be the inside plate and we're just gonna cut out exact size of the kickstand outside plate and drill some holes in it for the screw. So just take one of these plates and get your marker to mark it. We got this hacksaw here. Get a hacksaw with bi metal blades. So make sure you can cut metal. The wood ones ain't gonna do nothing. Just wanna put that in and screw it in like this. Make sure this thing's tight, but not too tight because you don't want any movement because you ain't trying to cut your hand off. But when you put this rim back on, you get some rim tape, but I'm using some duct tape because I ain't got all that fancy stuff, but it does the job because you don't want the rim, uh, the rim spokes and the screws to poke through the tube on the tire. But I went to a tire shop to put this back on because getting that tube in there was a pain in the butt. But if you could do it, if you got easy tools and stuff just put some powder or some soap to lubricate the tire and the rim but i went and cut out my kickstand piece right there and then i'm hitting it with some polish because them edges are sharp now i'm drilling the holes in there helps to get a piece of wood in the back and then get some titanium or some cobalt drill bits to make sure they can cut through that steel Here's our kickstand here. We're just going to mount that on there. 
here you can see that if we don't cut that bottom piece out, it's not going to work because it's going to go in contact with the motor. So we're going to cut about two inches off the bottom here with this hacksaw. And we get ready to put that tire on there. We're going to put that tire on there first because I don't got a mount to hold this bike up while I'm putting this kickstand on. But while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and put these spaces on and these brakes on first just to make it easier. Any price, if you want to come with one of these things, you can just rip them off. I don't know why they on there. Just connect these in. They a little difficult sometimes. That's why I take the three wires and put them in first. Because they're the easiest. And here's our brakes. We got these one screws that came with these two and three millimeter discs. But I went and got some custom screws from Maker Warehouse. There'll be a link in the description to get these. Because they got flat tops on them. And they make it easier to mount this spacer on. It depends on what brakes you get. You're probably going to get 170 millimeters, but I went to a 3 millimeters just because I want that extra braking power. They're thicker brakes, more heavy duty. But you're going to need a lot of adapters and treble fitting them on the frame with your brakes. And that's just the way it is. But we put our brake spacer down first then we get our brakes here and screw that in to the hub motor and then we follow up with the wire spacer and I forgot to show this earlier but before you put this on you might need some washers and I cut I use a Dremel to cut a hole in the washer to fit that wire through there. But here's what we're doing with the kickstand. We just screwing in the top ones first. Again, link will be in the description for this universal motorcycle kickstand. But with these screws, they got, they got, uh, you're going to need a wrench for them. And you're gonna look like this because reaching these bottom screws is difficult. And you're gonna need a set of pliers and a wrench. You're gonna need to hold one side of the screw while having a small wrench to fit in there. It's not easy, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get it done. As you can see, there's like no clearance in here. But it's really sturdy and it does the job. Just test it around, make sure it's not wiggling and no screws are loose, and you're good. See why we cut off that bottom part right there. No movement here. You're going to make sure you got a hole in the bottom of your bike frame to fit these wires in. I had to take a Dremel and make it bigger. But here's what we got so far. Here's our new motor on here. We got the XC90 anti-sparks. We got our connections here on the controller. 